Hello indie gaming fans! Have you ever felt like that shooting games were a bit too boring because all you did was shoot, and that the thing that would make them more exciting was to sit around a shop and sell stuff? Well, have I got the game for you. I'm the ex-hardcore gamer, and today I'm going to be talking about Neon Blight on PC. Neon Blight opens up with the story to kick things off to show that you're in the future in a cyberpunk themed city and you're playing as Lara, one of two cops responding to a call. As you can imagine, the call does not go as planned, but it does serve to set up as sort of a tutorial to get you started in the game. As things go from bad to worse, we jump ahead 15 years further into the future. Now Lara is no longer a part of the force and has instead decided that she's going to open up an exotic black market gun store. What has she been doing in those 15 years? I don't know. Why did she decide to open up a gun store? Also, I don't know. It's all kind of hastily put together and just comes off as, hey, something bad happened while I was on the force, so I decided to quit and now I'm kind of down on my luck. All this is further cemented by running into your old partner and he says about how much he misses you and wishes you were still on the force. It appears that Lara's idea is not all that new because she's not actually opening up a new business, but instead bought one from somebody who was already running it. And as soon as you open the door, there just so happens to be somebody there that used to know the old owner. There there to kind of tell you about how to run things but it all just comes off as very strange and really the story as a whole is just very convoluted and kind of disjointed when you start off your store is completely empty you have absolutely nothing to sell so what you end up having to do is wander off into a nearby forest to go around and start killing off some enemies when you kill enemies hopefully they'll drop some money or even some guns if they drop the guns you can use them to fight off other enemies but if you save them and head back to your store you'll you'll be able to sell them. This whole gameplay loop creates definite vibes of Enter the Gungeon meets Moonlighter. It's all about being able to run around and shoot your enemies, but then also running the shop to make more money. The gunplay in Neon Blight will be pretty standard fare for those that are familiar with the genre. It's going to be WASD for your movement and the mouse for aiming if you're using mouse keyboard, and obviously left and right analog sticks if you're using a controller. Also pretty standard is left click to shoot and right click to dodge dodge or on a controller right trigger to shoot and left trigger to dodge this gunplay all pans out on the usual dungeon type setup of having different rooms that you can advance to that are all different screens each room gives you the opportunity to have a new area to explore to be able to kill more enemies to find more guns to sell possibly some more money and there are even some quests that you can complete along the way complete these quests to get different bonuses that will help you out in various ways as you progress further into the game it all boils down to the usual risk reward type situation where you need to decide if you want to go further into the dungeon or return home to your base to be able to sell if you keep going you might find a more valuable gun one that might help you fight off to get further or just one that's going to be worth more money but if you die then you lose everything that you're holding and that run is completely gone so let's say you do end up finding a bunch of different guns and you do make it back to your store what happens then well now you start off with the very modest shop that only has four different stands and you put the different guns on there that you have for sale. You can set the price and it will tell you what the market value of that particular gun is. You can choose to go for more and get a bit greedy or you can undercut most of the other sellers and sell it faster. Based on the different decisions that you make on how you want to sell things, you're going to build a reputation amongst the customers of the city. Ultimately, you want to make good decisions so that people will want to come to your store and the word will spread and more customers will show up. Obviously, the more people that come through the doors of your store, the better, because that means you have a better chance of making more money. As more people come through the store, they may have somebody who comes through that's more willing to spend a higher amount of money. Either that, or you can just choose to keep things nice and cheap and sell things quickly as people just keep filing through. You then turn around and use that money to be able to make upgrades for your store. This can be something visual like adding a plant or an arcade machine, or it could be something more practical like having more stands to be able to sell more weapons at the same time. Either way, these things will help improve the reputation of your store, which will then in turn make more customers come through. The other major thing that you'll be spending your money on is spending it on tolls. 
And that may sound weird, but let me explain. As you go through different parts of the dungeons, there will be sections that are locked off. Pay a one-time toll and you will unlock that section to be able to explore it further as much as you want. So while you may start as only being able to explore the forest, you will then be able to unlock new sections like an underground bunker or a research lab. The more areas that you have to explore, the more chances you have of finding more exotic weapons. On top of enemies dropping guns, you will find keys that allow you to go to different gun vendors or you can spend money on guns and stores along the way as well. There will be some light puzzle areas, and yes, there are bosses too. Getting kills in the game is only a chance to drop money or weapons. There is no leveling up or experience system. The only way to get better is to make more money to be able to buy more upgrades for your shop or to be able to have new areas to explore. So all of this is basically in theory and how I think that the game plays because unfortunately, well, now things are going to take a bit of a darker turn in this review. This game in its current build has a lot of bugs. So if you remember, I mentioned how if you do not make it back to your shop, your run was for nothing. And unfortunately, that means that I spent multiple hours without being able to make any kind of progress whatsoever. And before you jump all over me in the comments, I don't mean that I kept dying and that I wasn't good enough and therefore was losing progress that way. I mean, I was running into bugs where it forced me to quit the game and therefore I lost everything that I got in that run. While I did talk with the developer and he did say that there were fixes that were either already done internally and waiting for the update to get pushed out or they were in the process of being worked on, unfortunately, I can only review the game that I have been given, so this is my experience with it. The most common and game-breaking bug that I would run into is there are multiple spots on the map that when you go to walk to a different screen, it doesn't actually take you to where you're supposed to go. Instead, it'll warp you to a completely different part of the map that you're actually not even supposed to have access to yet. Since this area is supposed to be off-limits at that moment, there's no way for you to actually make your way back. Even if you go the right way, you'll eventually run into the toll booth and your character will no longer be able to move. She will literally be stuck in place where you can't move at all, so you have to quit the game and restart it, which makes you lose anything that you've grabbed that run. While there were definitely points that I was able to determine that I was not supposed to go to to avoid this, I would find other ones that would happen and it would just keep happening over and over again. It felt like navigating through a minefield because I never knew whether I was actually going to be able to go somewhere or if it was going to make me have to quit. Being new to the game, you wouldn't even realize sometimes that you're being warped around so you don't realize you're in the wrong area. So that led to many hours of just wandering, not realizing that you can't even get back. Okay, for the sake of argument, let's just say, okay, this is something that already has a fix in the pipeline so it probably won't be an issue. And and even if it was, you should learn where the places are that you can and can't go. Sure, that's not where the problems end. Unfortunately, I ran into multiple instances where my character would get stuck in a wall and not be able to move, or sometimes you would kill an enemy and what they would drop would be either in a wall or up at a height that you couldn't reach. And as I mentioned, them dropping the money and the guns is what the runs are all about. So if it keeps happening, it really makes it hard to make any sort of progress in the game. Let's talk about something less game breaking, but also equally frustrating. There are fast travel points all across the map that it tells you to go to. When you walk up to it, it says to press E to use it. But guess what happens when you do that? Absolutely nothing. I even confirmed it with the developer that they are non functional right now. So now you think that you're supposed to get to a point that's going to help you out and it does nothing. So these are some of the major things, but unfortunately I can go on and on with different bugs that I've run into while playing this game. While many of them are minor and not game breaking, just the fact that there are so many of them, it really screams that this game is not ready for release. For those of you wondering, yes, I am familiar with early access, but this game is not early access. It felt like playing a playable alpha and yet it has a version number that's above version 1.0. Not to belabor the point anymore, but I just feel like saying that because of all the issues that this game had, it's really hard to see what the true potential of what the game actually could and should be. Neon Blight has your standard pixel art style that you see in many indie games released these days. There's not a ton of detail to what the characters look like, but I think that that's more of a design choice versus just a lack of ability. There's also some cool lighting effects at various points in the city, and the enemies themselves for some reason also all give off a light source. When you're in the city versus in the dungeon, they look drastically different. They've done a great job of making it unique. On top of that, when you're in the dungeon and you unlock new areas to explore, 
each environment is drastically different. Side note, and something that you probably realized while watching the video, despite what the name may imply, there's not a whole lot of neon going on in this game outside of some signs in the city. So once you first boot up the game and you get to the main menu, you're going to hear a sweet synthwave soundtrack start playing. That's the only time that you're going to hear any music. From that point forward, the game is completely quiet in terms of music and you only have sound effects. To make matters worse in the sound department, these sound effects vary greatly in quality. Sometimes they're super high quality and sound exactly what you would expect them to be, and sometimes you have an enemy that sounds like it's somebody doing a bad Donald Duck impression. Also, the levels are all over the place where things are either way louder or way quieter than they should be. In the case of Neon Blight, I think what we have here is developer bleeding tapes biting off more than they can chew. It's an ambitious title that has a lot of potential that unfortunately doesn't live up to. There's a lot of problems that need to be fixed before this can even be playable and considered worth buying. Thank you so much for supporting clickbait free content here at I Dream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to shout out our brave indie warriors and legends that help to support this channel through channel memberships. At the Indie Warriors tier, we have Bill, Adriana Amato, CJR, Julian Colbus, Jesse, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Christian Cruz, PSC, Solarusi, and Chic Geek. At the Indie Legends tier, we have Nathan Moore, Skepticism, Mitchell Hall, Jen Rose, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beef Arenies, Business Cody, Chiron, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, Ophidian Mind, Lord Metroid, Sea Coil, and Larkison. Thank you so much for all that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else, head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.